Hello everyone, uh, I'm Sarthak and I welcome all of you to the session on decision making. As all of you know that 2023 is around the corner and uh, a lot of you would be solving uh, previous year decision making questions. Uh, this is one area uh, a few people are naturally good at, uh, but uh, there, there must be a few concerns uh, like revolving around this section. Sometimes uh, we do get the answer of this qu the questions are given here, but uh, the accuracy uh, can be a little bit challenging because uh, when you answer the question it's not like you are finding it difficult to get to the answer but there might be two three options where you get confused and uh, then you go for some option and then later realize okay i should have gone for the other one so that is what uh, can be a little uh, tricky in the decision making portion but personally what i have felt always is this is one area uh, which can be very scoring because one third of the paper almost is from the decision making part uh, so if you do well in this, you really stand a good chance to do well in the uh, like actual exam in terms of the overall score because uh, from the other two areas, uh, the pressure reduces. Okay. So uh, in this uh, video, I'll be taking you through five uh, key points and uh, through these key points, when you uh, try and analyze every question, uh, you will almost hit a 99-100% accuracy if you keep these five points in your mind while solving questions. Okay. So what are these key points and how you should think about them? That is the whole purpose of the video uh, to take you through these uh, five key points. You can apply to every decision making question for the ZAD exam and uh, try and apply these questions in the previous year papers, uh, ZAD 2022, ZAD 2021, uh, 2020, 2019 and 2018. At least last five years ke jo decision making questions hai. Try and apply these uh, five key points while you are uh, like filtering out the options. Kya hona chahiye, kya nahi hona chahiye. Uh, try and apply these uh, five key points and definitely find this useful. So just before we start, it's a quote, it's not hard to make decisions once you know what your values are. So the point I like of saying this is these key points are based on uh, the values that the exam is expecting. Because of course, when I'm giving you a question and I'm asking you to decide, most of the questions are uh, sometimes real life based. And I cannot explain you the entire uh, scenario in just one or two paragraphs. You need more data to be able to arrive at the right decision. You might have a few cross questions also, but in the exam that cannot be done. We have to read whatever is given in the context and then accordingly answer. So a particular uh, a set of uh, uh, like uh, like reasoning process is there and the examiner expects you to answer it that way. Once you solve uh, some uh, like 40, 50 questions, you will get to know, okay, this is what the examiner expects. And I should think on these lines because uh, like uh, very famously said that, that there is no right and wrong decision. Execution matters. So I cannot say option A is the right answer and B ekdam se galat hai. Waisa bolna difficult hai, but uh, from a very uh, like objective point of view, if you analyze the exam, the options are given in that kind of a way and you just have to use the framework that I'm going to give you, uh, give you in this session and you'll easily able to filter out, okay, this is what the examiner wants me to answer. So, wo psyche samajna hai, that if a decision making question is being given to me, which option is the best one as far as the expectations of the exam is concerned and why are the other options wrong? What are the red flags that I can quickly uh, look for when I'm solving the questions and then I can say, okay, this is definitely wrong. Okay, so to take you through these five points, I'll explain uh, the points one by one in the upcoming slides. But these are the five major points that you need to keep in mind. First point is managing all the stakeholders. You will have to consider every uh, like stakeholder that is uh, involved in the business processes. Okay, you ca cannot think of it in one sided uh, way. You have to think about everyone who is involved and is going to be affected by your decision. And uh, that is what makes your decision more matured and makes you a good manager. So managing all stakeholders is the first point. Second is your long term impact assessment. Every decision you should uh, like you are making, it has to be long term. Third one is moderation over extremity. Uh, as managers, you are expected to operate on gray lines. Okay, black and white, uh, this or that, yes or no. Exactly always uh, life me cheese vaise nahi hote. So sometimes I'll have to uh, like not look for extreme options and look for the uh, like uh, solutions in a moderate perspective. No biasness. We shouldn't be biased while making a decision. Uh, and then the last is your decision must be positive and constructive. If you keep this framework and uh, from this uh, like line of thought, you try and analyze the options. You will definitely find the other questions easy and your answers will be more accurate 
and you can score a 15 16 plus easily in this section so let us try and uh, like figure out what these uh, points mean actually one by one so looking at the first one managing stakeholders so all stakeholders involved in the decision as i said must be considered uh, and you should think about everyone because your decision is going to affect them okay suppose i am a production company i'll have to think about everyone in the supply chain from my suppliers to my customers to the retailers to the wholesalers everyone who is involved any decision that i'm taking or any change that i'm making it is going to affect uh, some way or the other to every stakeholder so i should think about everyone i i shouldn't think it in one uh, like a uh, sided view i shouldn't have that and uh, that is a sign of more mature thinking and it helps your business maintain its relation across the supply chain long term assessment as i said you shouldn't be myopic uh, like a short sighted three mahina char mahina mein kya ho raha hai wo mat dekho long term because every business at the end it's about growth and profitability your cause may be different your product may be different your service may be different your values may be different your vision may be different uh, it will vary from business to business but end two parameters if you look at it it is profitability and growth okay that is the whole nature of any business you cannot say i am stagnant and i do not want more growth after this so growth is an integral part of your business and if you think long term your decisions are long term and uh, the, uh, you're thinking about what's going to happen 10, 10 years down the line how is this decision going to affect my growth uh, down the lane then only it becomes uh, correct okay you shouldn't think about three months four months uh, one year uske baad kya hoga ya immediate jaise solve ho jaye i don't care what happens next that kind of a mindset you shouldn't have while making decisions and i have picked these terms uh, contextual okay you will analyze all the previous questions you will say uh, you will see some way or the other these problems are uh, in a way being asked in the uh, like exam questions okay it would be something related to long term assessment or something related to uh, like uh, uh, thinking about all stakeholders so that is why i have mentioned these points because if you just keep these five points in mind all your questions will get it correct going to the third point no extreme action okay do not take extreme action i will not do this or uh, we will not do that you should be a little open okay thoda openness rehna chahiye uh, and uh, you should welcome uh, new incentives uh, like uh, new avenues uh, for uh, like uh, growth or any kind of a change also you should take it in a positive way a, a lot of skepticism uh, like while taking a decision is not also welcome so moderation work in moderation while making decisions because that is what is the sign of a mature ma manager and it it indicates that you are looking at both sides of the coin okay you shouldn't look at one side of the coin and that takes me to the second point uh, that is no biasness okay you shouldn't be biased based on your preconceived uh, ideas and maybe your values or something ki mujhe ye karna nahi hai or there was a typical question a few years back uh, some merger had failed and then again there is an attempt to make the merger with the same company what should the ceo do so if you are biased and you are already uh, like uh, flawed in your thought process that it, it has gone wrong once so it will go wrong again so i will not even think about it that is called as biasness okay i should be open okay let's see what's different this time okay i am not deciding right away but let me uh, like uh, evaluate what are the options this time uh, it uh, didn't go la well last time that doesn't mean it will again go wrong this time so what all things that uh, can be done you should have a little bit of openness okay and the last point uh, coming to the last point uh, positive and constructive okay so your decision should always uh, like give a positive note okay you are taking it in a positive way uh, every decision that you are making and constructive it, it should indicate and insinuate growth in uh, the minds of everyone involved in the decision okay and that sends the right signals uh, to the investors of the company to the customers of the company to all the stakeholders so it's not like all these points are very different from each other but i have selected these five points analyzing the previous questions and what all points you need to keep in mind while answering those questions okay so every time you see a new question take your time aram se read the question very carefully put yourself in the situation and then keep these five points before making a decision do not just go with your gut feeling uh, thinking that i am a good manager already so whatever i am deciding i'll make it correct it's not about debating uh, and i have already said that there's no right and wrong answer even if the correct answer in from the examiner's point of view is a but you went with b uh, you could uh, prove your uh, uh, like decision correct but you don't have time to do that you cannot debate with the examiner why not b why not a 
so we have to understand and get our scores that's the job okay because every de decision is debatable we can discuss long about that okay why this why not that usme kya galat hai isko usko mila ke bhi kar sakte hain or maybe all options mein i can pick a few uh, strategies from a and then b and then c and then combine and make another decision so real life mein it works that way but not everything can be done uh, in in that constant based uh, like uh, question so whatever has been given to so we have to approach it in a particular way and if you follow to these five principles you will definitely definitely find the questions extremely easy so that was it uh, that i tried to convey uh, from my end in this video very soon i'll be uh, like discussing uh, the previous questions at least the last five years the decision making paper i'll be uploading in the channel before the exam hope it will help you in your uh, like examination process and help you boost your scores thank you all if you are new to the channel do like the video if you found it useful and uh, subscribe to the aptitude club channel and we'll meet again next in yet another video thank you bye bye